guys, welcome back to In Case of Econ Struggles. Welcome to another micro struggle. Today we're talking about production set properties again, but this time I want to talk about it graphically more than mathematically. So timestamps are below if you would like to jump around, but let's get right into it. Here are the properties of production functions that I'm going to talk about today. Again, all graphically. None of these are surprising. Returns to scale, reversibility, no free lunch. We'll probably talk about two and three together on one graph. We'll probably talk about four and five also on graph just because it's kind of easy. But we're also going to start off with this returns of scale. And I'm also just going to sort of describe how we graph production sets because it might look different than some other graphs you've seen before. So let's go ahead and start talking about how we graph a production set. So notice that we are using both the first quadrant and the second quadrant of our axes. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to put Y on the Y axis. That's going to be our output good. And then on the X axis is going to be our inputs. I'm also going to represent this. This could be a vector of inputs, but for now, let's just assume one input, one output. Notice that the pink line here, right here, is our production possibility frontier or our production set. It's got decreasing returns to scale because it's concave. But notice that we're going into the second quadrant because if we want to make more output, we need to use up or expend more inputs. And if we're expending more inputs, we have more negative inputs. So negative inputs mean we're using them. Positive output means we're getting some output out. So inputs go in, they're negative. Outputs come out, they're positive. And we have this whole thing going on in quadrant two. Now, if we were to use constant returns to scale, unsurprisingly, it's going to be a line. And if we had increasing returns to scale production, it would be a convex curve again in the second quadrant. Now, in the first quadrant, you can see it becomes sort of this line. And this line is basically the budget constraint of the owner with the profit that he makes from doing this production. So a classic example that I've heard before, we're going to use flour to make cupcakes just so it's one input, one output. And what's going to happen is the owner is going to make some profits out of selling those cupcakes. This is the amount of cupcakes that the owner could buy with the profit he makes from selling his cupcakes. And this is the amount of flour that he could buy from the money that he makes selling his cupcakes. This is his budget constraint at the given prices. This is his indifference curve for flour and cupcakes. So you could really do his entire utility maximization problem on the same graph as his production set. I'm just doing this because some textbooks show this and some professors show this when they're talking about graphical production sets. But really, we're going to focus right here on this lovely production set right here. The next two properties we're going to talk about are irreversibility and no free lunch. So first, let's talk about no free lunch. No free lunch is also just called no magic. Basically, you can't make things for free. So over here in this first quadrant, this is saying that you make outputs and you make inputs for free. So this would be saying that you're making flour and you're making cupcakes in this free lunch zone over here. That's not allowed. You can't have both your X's and Y's be strictly positive. Otherwise, you're doing some sort of magic. You're pulling flour and cupcakes out of thin air. And that's not allowed in this economic theory world of production sets and production possibility frontiers. That's what we call the free one zone. This is the free one zone all in blue. That's not allowed. You cannot have any free lunch. So if your production set satisfies no free lunch, it can't go through this first quadrant right here. Now, when we talk about these properties of production sets, remember that it's not the case that every production set needs to satisfy all of these properties. It's the case that you can look at a given production set and ask if it satisfies this property or that property, but it is not true that one production set needs to or has to or will satisfy all of these. You might have to check that. Irreversibility is one of those things that it may or may not satisfy. So for example, this pink line, if I look at point A, if I rotate this and try to look for negative A, is point negative A on the production set? It is not because this production set stops right here. But if I look at this green production set, then point B and negative B, where I've just flipped the sign for the coordinates of B, those are on the production set. So we do have reversibility in this sense. What is an example of a reversible production function? Well, for example, maybe your entire production set is you just like take a lid for a jar and you take a jar and you put them together and you make a lidded jar. Well, you can see that it would make sense that I could take the finished jar, I could unscrew the lid, and I would be back to having a unlidded jar and a lid. And so that would be a reversible production function. There's nothing crazy about that production function in any way. 
it just satisfies reversibility, whereas the production function or the production set in pink does not. For our last two production set properties, we're talking about free disposal and the possibility of an action. Possibility of an action is exactly what it sounds like. You're asking, is it the case that the point zero zero, not using any inputs and not getting any outputs, is that a possibility on your frontier? Is that something that you can do? That's the possibility of an action. Free disposal is basically whether or not you're allowed to be inefficient for free. So for example, I could produce this many cupcakes if I use this much flour, but maybe I decide to only produce this many cupcakes here. So you can see that basically I'm not gonna use all my inputs. And the question is when I throw away those inputs I don't use, is there some sort of cost or can I throw them away for free? If I can throw them away for free, I have free disposal, but maybe I have to pay to take them to a dump or I have to pay someone to take those extra inputs away then that would be a cost to me of being efficient, and then I would not have free disposal. It's not the case that I can't do it if I want to, but it's not the case that I have free disposal as, as one of my production set properties. So hopefully this just gives you a better idea of the production set properties in terms of how they look graphically, as well as how to read a production set on a graph. If this was helpful, make sure to like and subscribe, and we will see you next time for another case of Econ Struggles.